Hey guys, Will Mayhan here for We Make Game, and welcome back to part two of our quick and easy glossy green button tutorial. Now in part two, we are going to use the art assets that we created in part one. We're going to construct a button, and then we're going to drop it into an application so we can see it work. Now the first issue that we need to address is resizing. If you remember, we worked really big in the, when we created the art so we could see what we were doing, but now we need to shrink this down to a more practical size. The problem, of course, is since rasters are pixel-based, resizing can be tricky. Here's an example. If I shrink this button down to nothing, and then back up close to its original size, you can see the pixels are just torn to pieces. Now, Photoshop will attempt to make repairs, but it's just not good enough, and this is no longer usable in any application. <coughs> However, there is a solution to the problem, and that solution comes in the form of Smart Objects. Now, Smart Objects is one of those absurdly powerful tools, and it would literally take dozens of tutorials to cover everything they can do. Now, I fully intend to touch on at least a few of those capabilities in future tutorials, but for now, let's just call it our super awesome raster resizing tool. Now, if you haven't already opened up your previous document, go ahead and do that now. And the way we set things up is... On our layers palette, let's make sure that everything is visible except for the hotspot copies 1, 2, and 3. Now go ahead and select the top layer, hold down shift, and select the bottom layer so that all layers are selected. Right click and choose convert to smart object. Now it looks like it's collapsed those all into a single layer, but in reality that's nowhere near the case. All those layers still exist and they are intact in a separate document. And in fact, this document no longer exists in its own right, but rather it's a reflection of the smart object document. So that if we resize this button, you'll notice that we have absolutely no loss in quality because we didn't really change these pixels. Photoshop took a reference from the smart object document in real time. So now that we know we can resize it, let's go to image, image size, and let's choose something a little more practical for an application. Uh, 64 by 64 sounds good. So hit OK, and let's click up here and choose 100% so we can see what we're doing. And since we've already set up the layers previously, this is ready to be exported except for one thing. Remember that we are making a round button so we don't want these square corners poking out. And the way you do that is by making an alpha channel. First hold down control and click this icon right here and it makes a selection around the object. Now go to the channels window and down here at the second to the left, choose save selection as channel and it will make a new channel, a white circle on top of a black box. And what that means is the black areas will be 100% transparent when we export this into an application. Now back to your Layers tab, hit Control D to clear the selection, and go to File, Save for Web and Devices. Now what this is is a special save interface that adds an extra layer of compression so that in a situation where you're streaming live from the web or on a mobile device that has a limited amount of memory, this really squeezes the file size down. I'll go up here to this menu and choose PNG24. Make sure transparency is checked and hit save. Now we're going to name this button up and hit save. Now the next thing we need to do is to set this to the button over state and the way we do that is by drilling down into our smart object document and you open that by double clicking right here in this area. And now as you can see all there are layers are just as we left them intact. Now all we have to do here is to hide the visibility on the button up layer, close this document and hit yes when prompted to save and you'll notice that our source document has now been updated. Go ahead and hit File, Save for Web and Devices, and hit Save. And let's name this one Button Over. And hit Save again. Now next we need to bring up our Button Down state, and we do this a similar way. Double click in this area here to bring up the Smart Object document. And we want to hide the visibility on this layer so that our Button Down is now visible. 
but before we close out we want to hide the visibility on all the hotspots and bring up the visibility on the hotspot copies. I'll go ahead and close that document, hit yes when prompted to save, and you'll notice that our original updates. Go ahead and hit file, save for web and devices, and save. And name this one button down. And hit save one more time. Now that's going to do it for construction of our button. Now it's time to drop it into an application. Now I'm going to be using Adobe Flash Professional CS 5.5 for this. Now this is not really a Flash tutorial, so I'm going to kind of fly through the steps here. I will say them as I go, but I'm not going to go into any real explanation. Go ahead and open up an ActionScript 3.0. Now go to File, Import, Import to Library, and select all the buttons we just created and hit Open. And you'll notice that Flash drops them right into our library panel. It also creates three symbols for us, which we really don't need, so go ahead and select those and delete them. And we want to create a new symbol by right-clicking in an empty area in the pane, choose New Symbol, make sure the type is set to Button, and the name, let's just call this one Glossy Green Button, and hit OK. Now it automatically opens the symbol up for us, so now it's time to build. In the timeline, you'll notice there's four frames. We only need the first three. The first one already has a keyframe installed, but we need one for the over and down frames. And to do that, click and select both frames, right click, and hit Convert to Blank Frames. Activate the up frame find your button up PNG and drag it over to the middle. Now using the alignment tools we want to center it so click align horizontal center and click align vertical center. I'll go ahead and select the over frame drag the over button into the center align it as well align horizontal align vertical. Now activate the down frame and find the down button object and drop it in there align horizontal and align vertical. Now click up here where it says Scene 1. Now go back over here and grab a copy of your glossy green button symbol and drop it on the stage and go ahead and align it as well. Now we're ready to test and see how things work. Go to Control, Test Movie, and Test. And it will bring up an instance of Flash Player with our button right there in the middle. Now granted, we don't have a task assigned to the button yet, but it will still work. Um, if we arrow over it, we notice that it lights up, and if we click it, we'll notice that it appears to be pressed down into its own basil. And there you have it, folks, a glossy green button that you can use in virtually any application you want to use it in. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you were able to learn something, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.